Hello, this is Erica the Technology Nerd Likes to Film Stuff and was demonstrated by me jumping on the bed. I am quite excited right now because Canonical has introduced something quite awesome called the Ubuntu Edge. This new phone that I have decided to support and want to talk to you all about is what I'm kind of just calling the phone of the century because it's bringing phones in a new direction that I don't see other manufacturers doing and I honestly don't know if they're going to do this. So what exactly is the Ubuntu Edge? Well, it is a phone that is made just for the massive nerds out there who are going to support this project. So this is a phone that's not going to be mass released. This is not a phone that's going to be released on AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, any carriers. This is a phone that is going to be specifically for this campaign that I'm going to be talking about. As a lot of you know, I am a very big Android fan. I absolutely love the Android operating system and what it offers. But there is one thing about Android phones is that I have not been able to find the perfect phone yet. There has just always been some type of a compromise where I don't like the display, I don't like the camera, I don't like something about it. As of now, phones are kind of just made for everybody where they're kind of compromising here and there. Maybe it's hardware, maybe it's memory, maybe it's the GPU, maybe it's something. There is no niche market for people who want the most advanced super phone. So what Canonical has done with the Ubuntu Edge is they've taken a smartphone and they've added everything that the super nerd could possibly want into it. Starting off with operating systems, this phone is supposed to be meant for convergence where you're supposed to be able to use it as your one particular device. You can dock it and use it as a full Ubuntu PC and then you have Ubuntu Mobile OS at the same time. So if you were someone who was not familiar with the Linux-based Ubuntu operating system or even the new touch operating system that Ubuntu Mobile OS has released, that doesn't matter because this phone is going to be dual bootable at the same time with Android. And that is what I think is so cool. So at this current moment, maybe there aren't a lot of applications or development available for the new mobile Ubuntu operating system, but it will be. And if you're someone who has a very vast array of applications with Android, you're able to use that as well. You're able to plug it into a monitor via MHL and you are able to connect a Bluetooth keyboard onto it and it essentially is supposed to become your PC and your phone all at the same time. So how are they able to do this? Well, first and foremost, they are going to have 128 gigabytes of storage on this device. That, that is insane. I can't tell you how many Samsung phones I have gotten in the past year or so that only have 16 gigabytes of storage on the phone. That is crap. That is not enough to do anything. Not only is this phone going to have a massive amount of storage, it is also going to have the bleeding edge processors in it as well. Now, since the final specs haven't been listed because this phone is going to be released in May of 2014, we don't know what's going to be in it. I bet you it's going to be an octa-core CPU and the GPU I'm sure is going to be just fabulous as well. So this is a phone that's not going to mess around. If you are someone who's always on the go, I think this is probably going to be the perfect thing for you. And I know that it's going to be the absolute perfect thing for me. So if you are someone who's going to be traveling the world, this thing is going to have dual LTE, which means you're gonna be able to get LTE everywhere. Also like the HTC One, it's going to have stereo speakers that are going to deliver HD sound. So this thing is going to be magnificent for media. Now I know how all the phones out these days are just racing to get the most high resolution display. So one thing about this phone is it's only going to be a 720p display, but Canonical is urging that over 720p is not needed because your eyes shouldn't be able to see the pixels anyway. I kind of find that a little bit arguable, but I understand that it's good for power preservation and this or that. What they are most focusing on is a display that is absolutely gorgeous. That's another thing that just blows my mind about phones these days is that you do not have the ability to calibrate the display yourself. Every phone display that I have seen thus far has some type of issue where the colors aren't right, there's deviations in the color so you have a weird color cast on it, the contrast ratio isn't right, it just, you would think that the display, the most important part of your decision almost for buying a phone, would at least look nice. So instead of focusing on a 1080p display, it's going to be a 720p display that's going to be incredibly bright, it's going to have color accuracy, which is so important, and it's going to have great dynamic range. It's just going to be a nice display, finally! So this display they've determined will be 4.5 inches, not 5 inches, not 6 inches, but 4.5. Some of you might think that's a little bit small, but the thing with their phone is that they want a display that you can easily reach your thumb across under all points to be able to use the new touch operating system. 4.5 inches was their sweet spot. 
Another big issue is that you carry around your phone all the time. It needs to be tough, it needs to be strong, so they have actually crafted this thing all out of metal. It's got a really nice edge design, hence the edge in the product name. I think it just looks gorgeous and it's made to fit in your palm perfectly. Also, because a phone is something that you carry around all the time, the display likes to take a beating. One problem that people have is that the displays scratch pretty easily, even with Gorilla Glass 3, you can eventually scratch it. I've had a really great time thus far with Gorilla Glass last three and preventing scratches, but if you get sand around it, it's going to scratch the heck out of it and it's just not going to look nice. So what Canonical is doing is that they're actually putting sapphire crystal as the display lens instead. On most scale of hardness, the only thing that is harder than sapphire crystal is diamond. So that means that it's going to be very, very difficult to scratch it. That means no more screen protectors, except for one thing. If you were to drop it, it's still brittle, so it's going to crack, but it's not going to have as low of a threshold for cracking as Gorilla Glass does. So what do we have so far? Beautiful, incredibly strong, finally something that's pretty much scratch proof, the best processor available, the most storage you could possibly imagine, dual bootable, also it is a PC, a full PC. It's got stereo speakers and a beautiful display which means it's going to be great for media. It's dual LTE. Now looking at some specs on here, it's got a GPS, accelerometer, gyroscope, proximity sensor, compass, barometer, dual recording microphone, active noise cancellation. It's got 11 pin connector providing simultaneous MHL and USB OTG. You've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There is a silicon anode lithium ion battery that's made of a material that's made to really be able to pack in a lot of energy. So the battery life on this thing is supposed to be great as well. Now as far as the cameras, they say that the main camera on the back is going to be only 8 megapixels. They are not believing in the whole megapixel race. They really want to focus on the low light ability and the ability to get up close to take macro shots. So I'm sure they're going to get people in there who really know what they're doing with photography and I, I'm just so excited with this. It's got a 2 megapixel front facing camera. So that's on par with everything else. So if all of this that I am telling you about this particular phone hasn't excited you nerds out there yet, I don't know what to tell you. I am incredibly excited. The very first day that this campaign went up, I contributed $600. What I will get for pledging the $600 is that once the phone is released, I'm supposed to get one. Because as I said, that only supporters of this campaign are going to actually be getting a phone. It's not going to be released to carriers. So what are the parameters for this campaign? Well, Canonical is using Indiegogo to raise $32 million in just one month's time. I know that sounds overly ambitious and they're trying to break all records, but that's just the point. They're trying to make their own place, showing what crowdfunding can do. The amount of interest in this product, I think is going to catch the attention of a lot of manufacturers. And I really hope it's going to push the mobile industry forward. So if you think $32 million is too ambitious, I can tell you that only a few days they've raised, just at this time, it's $6.6 .6 million. So I am fairly certain that they're going to reach the $32 million, especially because they keep adding perks. During the first day of launch, they had 5,000 phones that was released at an introductory price of $600. That's fantastic for the specs that are going to be in this phone. And just this week, because they saw that that really helps, that really drove the momentum, what, $600 times 5,000, that's like $3 million. So now it looks like they keep adding perks. They started at $600, and then when that sold out, they eventually started having 625, 675, 700, 725, 775, going all the way up to $830, which is going to be the retail price of this phone. I know that's steep, but think about what you're getting with this. If you're someone who's not wanting to spend $830 on a phone, I recommend going to their site. I'm going to put a link in my description down here so that you can see what type of perks that they're offering at the time. Right now they have the phone for $775, $780, $790, and there's a couple of other perks. So I'm sure that they're going to keep adding perks in there. Now, if you're someone who just doesn't want to purchase the phone at all, I do encourage you to please, please help them out with the campaign. You can contribute any amount that you want. $20 gets you to be a founder where you get your name placed on the founders list of who contributed to getting this phone out there but literally you can contribute as much or as little as you would like. And I'm just asking you guys, please, this is so awesome. If it does not reach $32 million, they're just not going to release the phone. They're just going to be targeting, sending out their software to different manufacturers. But if this is something that does succeed, they're thinking of even doing this annually just for the people who support the campaigns. 
So please go check it out, contribute. And what I also love about this is that there's no secrets going on with the production of this phone. I know it's a long time from now until May of 2014, but after this one month and they collect the funding, we get a chance to actually see the entire progress of the phone. They're not gonna hide anything from us. So it's not like we're going to contribute some money and then we're just not gonna hear anything for a year. No, we get to have a chance of actually being part of something. And I really love that. Now, as far as the funding goes, it's all going to be done by PayPal, so you're going to need a PayPal account because I haven't seen thus far any other way to help contribute. If they don't meet the $32 million mark, you don't need to worry. It doesn't matter how little or how much you contributed. They're going to be refunding everybody. So please go to Indiegogo. I'm going to put a link in the description. Go check it out. Go see what's going on over there. Go look at the types of perks that they're offering. And best of all, if you have any spare change, please contribute because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I really feel that this is something that can help to influence the mobile industry. And for all of you pessimists out there, if you say, eh, by 2014, all the other phones out there on the market are going to be doing this anyway, good, fine, whatever. But somehow I doubt it. And I think that this phone is going to be something that's pretty special. So I'm pretty sure that this is something that I'm going to be keeping my eye on and updating about. So if there are any interesting developments, I will let you know. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Please visit my website, angeloftech.com. And I really hope that you can contribute to help make one of the best phones out there. Bye!